today we are going to see uh, how we can utilize deep learning uh, for solving online uh, harassment detection problem. So, uh, this is the outline. Uh, we are going to see uh, We're gonna see uh, online uh, how uh, big is the online harassment problem, and uh, uh, and then uh, we're gonna look into data related problems to detect harassment, and uh, one of the solutions uh, to uh, to fa uh, to address this data related problems is text generation. We're gonna uh, look into that. Then uh, we're gonna. We're going to see what are the problems with the state-of-the-art text generation models. Uh, then our proposed solution uh, to the latest model. Then evaluation and results. Uh, and uh, we're going to discuss uh, about uh, future work. This is the outline. Uh, so, <clears throat> online harassment. According to Pew Research Center, according to a report by Pew Research Center, 7% uh, of American population used social networks in 2005. By 2017, that uh, it becomes 76%. Uh, roughly 4 in 10 Americans have personally experienced online harassment. And 62% uh, consider it as a major problem. Particularly, young folks use social networking sites as a tool to connect and to maintain relationships with their friends and uh, uh, classmates. Uh, allowing unfiltered and sometimes anonymous exchange of content in social media uh, gives uh, increase the likelihood of. Uh, online social harassment I mean online harassment I'm sorry so hence uh, automatic uh, online harassment detection is vital for social networks so machine learning plays a crucial role for uh, building automatic online harassment detection uh, models well-balanced data is important. Well-balanced data is important for building a really good machine learning model uh, for uh, classification of uh, harassment tweets uh, from non-harassment tweets. In our examination on uh, abuse you and uh, harassment tweets data set, uh, we found that proposed of harassment label tweets to non harassment label tweets is small so in uh, in in this data set it has 46.5k tweets and the 3.5k tweets labeled as uh, harassment lab harassment tweets and uh, 43k uh, tweets labeled as normal tweets so this is a this scarcity of positive label data in the training set leads the uh, leads machine learning models uh, bias towards majority of uh, majority class uh, which causes uh, highly misclassification of minority class so this is a, one of the most challenging aspect during the online harassment detection problem i mean online harassment detection so these are some of the ways uh, to increase the positive label data uh, in an unbalanced uh, uh, da uh, training data set. One, is, one obvious way is collecting more positive label data and other is active learning. Uh, in active learning, it involves human in the loop. Uh, it trains um, on label data set, uh, we first train our model on label data set, then we feed unlabeled data set to that model, 
then we use humans uh, to uh, to verify lay uh, to verify label data with uh, low confidence. Uh, uh, for example, uh, so uh, even uh, active learning uh, in CAPTCHA, uh, so we choose images. So we choose images where uh, mm, uh, we detect bus or we detect traffic lights. From that, not only uh, it is ensuring that we are not missions, and, uh, but it is also ensuring, uh, it is also learning these are the images of traffic lights, these are the images of buses. So that is one example uh, of actual learning. Uh, another way is data augmentation by generating self-diverse and uh, trained diverse. Trained diverse means the data should be diverse from the training data set. Uh, we, uh, we, will augment some, we will augment data to minority class. In this research, we want to explore whether we can create augmented data by generating synthetic samples uh, to solve the positive label scarcity problem. So, uh, so we, we're going to follow these steps. First, uh, we, uh, we generate text, then uh, we augment the text, then now uh, we will balance. Uh, we will increase the number of positive label data, then now uh, we will balance the training data. So here, uh, So before uh, before getting to text generation, I want to brief about what is our problem and what solution we choose. Our problem is uh, scarcity of positive label data, so which leads poor classification model. So we want uh, we are uh, exploring text generation. We are experimenting on text generation models to augment more data to solve the scarcity of positive label data. So, so text generation. Text generation is one of the most uh, attractive problem in NLP community. Uh, so text generation uh, is a long based model which learns to, which learns the conditional probability of next word given the sequence of, uh, given the sequence of words in the training sample. For example, uh, suppose this is a, uh, uh, considered this uh, tweet here, uh, given the four, uh, first four words, uh, text generation learns to predict the next word. So deep learning models become the state of the art to detect, uh, I mean, state of the art for uh, text generation. So we're gonna see some of the state of the art text generation models in the following slide so so these these auto regressive models uh, these are auto regressive models here auto regressive the main idea behind auto regressive models is predicting the uh, most probable word given the sequence of uh, previous tokens so RNNs and RNNs with LSTMs comes under autoregressive models. RNNs, the objective of RNN is to maximize the likelihood of true token in the training sequence. So uh, here uh, it is, it is, it tries to, uh, given a series of tokens, it tries to maximize the likelihood of true token from the training sequence. So that is the objective of RNN. But uh, the problem with RNNs is long-term dependency learning. For example, uh, take this sentence. I grew up in France and after, uh, after certain information, uh, that sentence ends with I speak French flu fluently. So the France and French, these two words are uh, apart. Uh, this, uh, this, kind of the, this kind of dependency between uh, France and French is called long-term dependency because the point where we need France to detect the French in the sequence generation is very wide. So this RNNs, plain RNNs, uh, they, uh, they cannot learn these long-term dependencies. 
So we uh, the solution for this is RNNs with LSTM. So this long short term memory cell, uh, it memorizes these long term dependencies and it will use in uh, uh, in later stages wherever the information wherever the relevant information needed. So these two are auto regressive models, but uh, these two they face with exposure bias problem. Exposure bias problem is uh, this happens during a uh, generation. What happens during generation is uh, we generate one token and we feed that token to generate the next token. And we feed those two tokens to generate the next token. So in this way, we are trying to generate something new, but uh, the model did not see that sequence before. So model does not know what is the most probable word to, uh, to pick from the vocabulary. So, so the, errors, uh, it, the errors accumulate one after other throughout the sequence generation. So this problem is called exposure bias. GANs, so GANs, the fra uh, so GANs, uh, they, I'm sorry, GANs, uh, GANS is a framework uh, which is proposed by Ian Goodfellow alleviate the exposure bias problem. So GANS, uh, GANS has uh, basically two uh, modules, GANS framework, uh, 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 which is uh, one module is generator, other module is discriminator. Uh, generator learns to confuse the discriminator by generating high quality data and discriminator learns to distinguish whether uh, whether a data, whether an instance is real or not. So, for following these two GAN sequence, GAN and RANG GAN, they are, uh, they are text generation uh, models. So, sequence GAN, uh, they, they both follow the same framework, but uh, instead of discriminator, sequence GAN, uh, uh, we call the discriminator as rewarder because it uh, provides rewards to the generated sentence. It provides rewards to the generated sentence and real sentence. But the, uh, the objective of reward is it want to give high rewards to the real sentence and the low rewards to the generated sentence. But and the objective of generator is it aims to get the high rewards by generating a meaningful sentence. In a similar way in rank GANs, instead of a rewarder, we use ranker. Uh, the, the objective is very similar in uh, rank GANs also. It want to give high ranks to the training data and uh, low ranks to the generated uh, sentences. The generator aims to get high ranks. These two are uh, text, generation, uh, text generation GANs. Uh, they are a state of the art models. But uh, in spite of their uh, success, these two, they face, uh, uh, they face, uh, they face challenges. So what, what, what's the basic difference? So one is they weigh the different samples differently while in the other case you just linearly order. So, uh, so in rank, rank means ordering and the other one means assigning uh, weights which could be a further refinement of ranking. Uh, in, in rank GANs uh, they use, uh, they take uh, some data from uh, training data as a reference set. So after uh, uh, so they use that reference set and uh, uh, the data that we feed to discriminator, uh, they compare those both using cosine similarity and uh, they will see uh, which sentence is much closer to that reference set, which is which is a part of the uh, real which is the part of the real data. So in that way, it will give ranks to. Uh, yeah, it will give ranks to the data that feeds to the discriminator. So it uses uh, some part of training data to measure the cosine similarity between uh, generated sentence and real sentence. Then uh, uh, echo, how, uh, if it is more similar to reference data, then uh, it gives high rank. No, what I meant was that if you give me a reward, I can rank it too, right? Uh, so, so, so reward is much more uh, fine-grained compared to just ranking, which is just a total order on a bunch of samples, right? Is that true? I mean, is that is my understanding right? 
the difference between the two uh J- just think about something like 5 6 7 okay right and and consider uh, another one something like 55 66 and 77 yes i can still rank them in that order right yes but uh uh so uh this real gas they uh they try to solve this sparse reward problem there is a sparse reward problem they try to uh, solve a sparse reward problem by keeping i mean uh, by getting relative rank compared to the training set so i am going to discuss that sparse reward problem in a following slide uh, so so these two uh, gans they have uh, they face one of at least one of the challenges in the following <laughs> slides so these are uh, sparse reward and mode collapse so uh, so sparse reward is uh, giving a single reward after generating entire sequence why it is not good because for example take this sentence uh, so this is uh, i'm not sexist but it is female face if you consider up to that point that that has potential to generate a meaningful uh, uh, harassment feat but uh, if you consider the whole sentence it is uh, it is not that meaningful so uh, it would get a low reward if we get, uh, if we if we give single reward to the entire uh, generated sequence so it it, it doesn't help uh, it doesn't help learning process uh, to learn okay until this point this is good I, I i just need to learn the remaining uh remaining things i need i just need to try i just need to uh explore the remaining part to make it more uh to make it complete so it doesn't uh, help the uh, i mean this because of this sparse rewards uh sparse reward problem it doesn't help the model to uh learn efficiently so uh, this is one problem so in rank gan what happens is instead of giving a single i mean uh, so they claim that uh, by giving relative ranking so they solve this uh, sparse reward problem uh, and uh, mode mode collapse problem is uh, it is very general problem to gans where uh, uh, generated generates very limited diversity of samples uh, because uh, the objective of generator is to fool the discriminator so generator plays a very safe generator play safely by generating re, uh, very uh, by generating sentences which are very close to real text it tries to get the high rewards so because of that uh, generator ends up generating limited diversity samples so this is this we call as mode collapse problem so the latest work uh, which uses inverse reinforcement learning solves these two problems in gans so that we considered as our base line so how does it uh, solves the uh, sparse reward and mode collapse problem is uh, by giving rewards at token level so for each token it gives rewards and uh, by by using the entropy term uh, during the generation uh, entropy term uh, corresponds corresponds to exploration i mean uh, it uh, by maximizing the entropy term in a generator objective we we explore uh, we try to generate a diverse text so in that way we are uh, we are addressing the mode collapse i mean this irl addressing the mode collapse problem uh, so in this also reward objective is similar to the previous implementation it wants to uh, give high rewards to training data and low rewards to uh, generated data so this is the uh, in detail of generator objective so uh, the objective uh, here we want to maximize the expected rewards of the generated text and also we want to maximize the entropy so uh, 
but the problem here is uh, so maximal entropy but without uh, kind of crossing the harassment boundary right uh, yes that is correct yes so but the problem here is uh, by how, how does the system know that there is harassment boundary no, because that's what the training data is supposed to help you control. So I, I don't know exactly how the yeah, mechanics work. I mean, I find it very hard to imagine you can give such a comprehensive training data to get the coverage you want. I mean, what training data? How much do we understand? We don't even have that real comprehensive corpus. On the that's other true, hand, and, and that's why we can only get closer to generating harassment-like tweets mm. instead of being able to generate a perfect tweet that is that indicates harassment. And and that's the whole idea. You you don't have enough data, so how can you overcome that problem? Right, and the question is, could we, uh, I mean, I think this is future work perhaps, could we complement it, first of all, start with by giving a true language grammar, and second, start by giving, you know, understanding that there are, this is considered to be harassment. And, and how can we yeah. incorporate rules in them? How can we incorporate taxonomy in them? How can we incorporate sets of terms that mean the same thing or not mean the same thing? So body shaming and fat shaming are related. <coughs> how do we tell the system they're related? Those yeah. all you know are very important opportunities to think about because it's a, uh, this is such a complex problem you're trying to solve. And actually. Um, I think trying to address it uh, this way is pretty good. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I won't, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining the fact that this is a very challenging problem. Let's just try it and see how far we can go. I just feel that there's so much more of those that can be done by top down, adding top down to this bottom of thing. Yeah, I have some questions. I mean, I have some suggestions on the baseline that I'll talk to you later. Okay. But I would like to see some eventual examples of what you generate as harassment tweets through this process. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Okay. Yeah, I'll... Uh, so, so you use uh, the 3,500 as a training? Right? Yes, which is really you, small. Did you... What's the base model? Did you adopt any... Did you try it as a, like, uh, already train the model as a generator? Then based on that, that you, uh, we, we discussed that. Uh, yes, uh, no, no, no I, I did not try that. So I think you did try that. Um, we did not have uh, better results for that than the one that you have, that the one you're, you're going to present. So for example, one of the things that uh, you tried was uh, using the bird model as the pre-trained model and then uh, trying to uh, see how you can you how that can be used for the harassment uh, specific generation but the, the the kind of evaluation measures that we define which is again uh, an, an important contribution based on which the one that worked the best uh, was not that one so uh, maybe we need uh, more exploration in that part yes. that what is the best way to use uh, pre-trained model like BERT in this case. Uh, but, but yeah, there is certainly some one direction we, we you, you went, yeah. Yes. So I mean, here, here's a simple thing. I mean, I, I think you're going to cover it, but, but let me just tell you ahead of time yeah. the baseline that I'm thinking, which, was, which is extremely simple. So just take the original, uh, say you have 300 uh, harassing tweets. Okay. And let's take a very simple lexicon of synonyms. So word and a bunch of uh, synonyms. And re let's say word A has three synonyms. Make three copies of the tweet that contains the word and uh, that is the augmented uh, uh, set of uh, tweets. Okay. And uh, so with that balancing, let's see how your classifier performs and, and with your approach, uh, how it performs. Oh. Because of your diversity and other concerns, I would like to at least use that simple baseline and then you should be able to beat it uh, pretty easily. Is, is how you should probably start your evaluation. Yeah, yes. 
uh, yes, I mean, now uh, we uh, we started uh, exploring towards generating this diverse text. Uh, I mean, with yeah, that uh, that is a good idea to keep that as a baseline. Yes. So with the so uh, with with the latest, this is this is the problem with the generator. What happens is here increasing the entropy and uh, rewards can get us can get us the diverse text but uh, however uh, we need more data uh, we need more data to do uh, to balance these two terms what happens uh, if 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 we don't have more data increasing the diversity uh, causes loses the meaning and uh, if we compromise with the uh, diversity, it obviously generates uh, similar samples. So it does require more data to balance these two terms. So that's why we we uh, we proposed uh, it. That that's why we want to uh, we want to. Uh, Add, we want to incorporate a term to generate object Q which balances these two uh, entropy and uh, uh, diverse I mean meaning and diversity so we encrope we incorporated a term which uses domain specific uh, uh, data some are uh, domain specific knowledge in this case we use domain specific data uh, to preserve the meaning so here uh, what this term does is it tries to uh, it, it calculates the cosine similarity between the sa uh, generated samples and the trine set it tries to uh, keep these sentences uh, to one of the I mean uh, I mean it tries to keep these sentences closer to the training set uh, by doing that it, it by doing that it tries to balance the meaning and diversity because these embeddings are generated using uh, uh, domain specific uh, data uh, in sentence level cosine similarity it tries to uh, use the uh, different uh, tokens but at the same time overall it tries to get the same uh, it tries to get more closer to the trying data sentences so that's how uh, it. Uh, Tell me a little bit more about what domain specific knowledge you use. So that's the uh, next slide. So uh, so domain specific data in in our case we used tweets as uh, domain specific data. Uh, so which has forty six point five k tweets. Uh, these are some examples. They has the strong long ways, but. Uh, uh, but we cannot directly, I mean, they, they have strong long ways, but they are labeled as normal tweets. So for now, we use this data set to generate embeddings because this is, uh, this is closer data set that we get to generate uh, embeddings on the domain. So these are the some examples and uh, we use skip ground model to generate the word embeddings and uh, we use those word embeddings and uh, uh, measuring cosine similarity between uh, generated samples and uh, training data. So uh, this this improves learning process. Uh, if if you look at the generator objective uh, behavior here, uh, dotted ones are the baseline uh, models and. Uh, uh, and uh, the normal lines are uh, our model. If you look at that, our meaning, uh, we relatively generated better meaning sentences compared to the uh, compared to the baseline model. We relatively generated better line sentences, and also uh, we 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 improved the balance between diversity and meaning. If you look at these two, these two are our model, and uh, 
and the baseline model uh, what happens is baseline model the diversity started increasing and uh, meaning started going down uh, at the end of uh, experiment I mean after uh, 40 iterations if you so this in this way uh, by adding that term we improved uh, learning in generator and also in rewards we started getting relatively better rewards compared to uh, compared to the baseline model so the green ones are the rewards to generated sentence uh, reward the objective of reward is to give high rewards to generated sentence and the low rewards to uh, gen, uh, I mean high rewards to trying sentences and low rewards to generated sentence so you will not even mark x and y axis so so these these are the training iterations and uh, those are the reward values. The y-axis is the rewards and uh, x-axis. And how did you calculate the reward value? Uh, it, it, it is the average of the rewards that uh, we... How do you know the reward is meaningful? What, what is it? Can, can you give, explain exam, with an example? So if it is uh, more closer to the training data set it gives high reward if the generated sentence well, uh, but the point is the definition of closeness is what uh, closeness in, in is this really case semantic closeness or lexical closeness or uh, uh, semantic distance is a very challenging problem you know? no, here you talking about cosine similarity or what uh, no, so the way rewarder is learned is by using uh, the LSTM that is the exact LSTM being used to generate the data. So if you if if your LSTM identifies that the sequence that it has captured uh, for the generated sentence is uh, sort of similar to the one that it has seen in the training sentence, then you consider that as uh, closer sentence and consider those two as closer sentence. So the real objective here is to assign, it is basically how can uh, we have two sets of uh, sentences. One set is training set, another set is generated set. Um, in, we are assuming that our generator is perfect in this case and hence we are trying to learn a rewarder that given this LSTM assigns uh, equal reward to both this set of sentences. So, uh, as he mentioned, uh, it, uh, it gives rewards uh, if it is much, I mean, if, if it is much closer to the training data that it's seen <coughs> previously. That's the reward objective. Uh, by changing the generator objective in our uh, uh, in our proposed model, uh, we started getting better rewards compared to the previous. Uh, pre, I mean, compared to the base model, because uh, if you look at the base model here, uh, the meaning started uh, going down. That makes rewards also uh, started decreasing. So the base model doesn't have the domain specific. No, the domain it, knowledge it, part that no, it doesn't have. So we, since. Uh, yeah, we incorporated that domain specific knowledge term to balance this uh, entropy and uh, ma ma I mean meaning and entropy. So evaluation metrics. Uh, so uh, in evaluation metrics, our uh, objective is to measure how much self-diverse is the generated text and how much trying diverse is the generated text and how, uh, how good is the quality of generated text these are our objectives so uh, we could not use uh, I mean we could not use existing evaluation metrics that are uh, proposed in uh, previous papers uh, so, uh, because uh, the, this is the existing metric bilingual uh, blue uh, bilingual evaluation under study this this originally uh, developed to uh, 
evaluate the quality of uh, mission translation. But uh, later, uh, later uh, text generation. I mean, later in the literature, uh, in the literature, uh, uh, authors started using this blue metric to evaluate the quality of generated sentences. But, but the problem is, we our objective is we want to generate a diverse text by comparing with the uh, train data. It does not, I mean, we may generate a different sentence from trying data. So it does not, it, it's, it doesn't serve as a good evaluation metric for uh, measuring quality and, uh, yeah, for measuring quality. So instead of using this blue, so, uh, so for, uh, this is the, this is how we will calculate Blue. Uh, for example, we have a candidate sentence and reference sentence. If the candidate sentence has only three tokens, and uh, uh, we will calculate Unigram Blue score uh, by considering by considering each occurrence of these words in the reference uh, reference uh, reference reference sentence. Uh, so the the cat. So those three are appeared in the reference. So we will take how many words appear over total uh, tokens. So it's a uh, it's a one. So it's a uh, it considered this as a good quality sentence. Uh, and uh, if we take bigrams d d and d cat. So if we if we consider bigrams of our standard sentence, so it will uh, look for d d. So d d is not present in the reference set. So it gives zero, and the D cat is present. It gives one. So half is the uh, 0.5 is the uh, bigram blue score in this case. So this is how it uh, calculates the quality. So, but uh, since our uh, generated sentences are diverse, so we are not using this metric. Instead, uh, we we will use the following metrics for uh, measuring the diversity and quality. So, so the first metric, blue diversity, which is the variation of blue. So what it does is uh, it uh, it does the same uh, same thing that blue does, but uh, here uh, we take reference set, uh, reference set as a trying data and the evaluated uh, set as a generated data, and we will measure how different they are because we are trying to get diverse text. We will measure how diverse they are using the blue so our desired direction is we want to get the low score for this so low score means uh, they both are not matched uh, they both are I mean they both are not that similar so under blue self blue is something where it takes the inside I mean it takes the sentence from a generated set and it compares with all the other sentences so here uh, uh, we want to get lower score. It does say uh, it. It says that our uh, generated sentences are diverse from each other, and then uh, we have a normalized perplexity. Uh, perplexity we use to uh, see how good is our model for generating quality sentences. So in this case, we use domain-specific data. The data that we used for generating embedding, so the same data we have, uh, so we use that domain specific data as a reference set and uh, generated data and uh, and uh, and uh, measured uh, normalized perplexity. Here uh, I'm going to discuss about this normalized perplexity in later slide because uh, usually uh, if you take perplexity, it should be low, but uh, the way we uh, model this normalized perplexity. Uh, the higher score means uh, the bet, uh, the model generated better quality sentences. And also cosine similarity. Cosine similarity we uh, compare between a trying data and generated data, and we see how uh, how good quality of our generated sentences compared to the trying set. So normalized perplexity. What uh, we did is uh, we took the vocabulary. On, uh, we took the vocabulary of a domain specific data, we randomly generated sentences and we give, uh, we give 
perplexity scores for that model as zero and uh, we give perplexity score for uh, domain specific data as one so if we compare uh, so we uh, so if we calculate our perplexity in compare i mean in compared to domain specific data it should be closer to domain specific data not some randomly generated data so that's why uh, higher the value of normalized perplexity uh, make sure the quality of uh, uh, our generated sentences these are the results uh, here uh, IRL CS is our uh, our model uh, why I, I use CS is we we are using cosine similarity term in the generator objective uh, to make it better that's why I kept here IRL CS so uh, if you look at uh, blue diversity we got uh, low scores compared to the IRL uh, the baseline model and also in self blue also uh, we got low scores compared to baseline model which tells us our generated sentences are diverse from each other and also they are diverse from the trying data and uh, perplexity uh, uh, our, uh, our model performs well compared to the baseline model uh, in quality and also maximum cosine similarity uh, uh, our model does better compared to baseline model. So finally, this is the harassment detection pipeline setup. So, so uh, we have 3,500 uh, harassment label tweets. We use those tweets as a, we use 90% of those tweets as a training data set for uh, our uh, text uh, for our uh, text generation model. Then. We generated uh, 600 tweets, around 20% of the tweets uh, of trying data and we augmented those tweets to trying data and then uh, we classified uh, and we, com we combined that data with the non-harassment tweets data and uh, we classified. Uh, it, does, uh, it does better when compared to um, when compared to the classification uh, we done without adding any generated sentences so with uh, uh, so with addition of generated sentences it does 10 percent better at classification classification task the 3500 these are the positive examples yes the so they are so the, you hold a 10 percent for testing yes so can you show me what kind of uh, new tweets did you generate? Yes, uh, actually I removed that slide yesterday. Uh, hey, that I'll, was a key thing. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll show you that tweet. I think here is something you may want to do when you update your slide. So, I mean, show some uh, training samples, show yeah. some domain specific uh, things that you added and show the new one that you generated and then you kind of walk and say look this adds to diversity because it is very different from the chosen training samples yes. or chosen yes. so I mean that's how you kind of uh, get your uh, it's really difficult to tell. <laughs> no but still I mean unless we see that yeah I mean it doesn't have to be great but it should at least show some diversity that we can relate to basically that is exactly my input when we try to me. so I'm surprised that that is not here that's exactly, you know, I, mean, I, I only understand the example. You can throw me all kinds of Google the Goop here. See, because that is your driving force, right? I mean, yeah. intuitions were driven by I mean, everything that you did for metric definition and all that was for that. It was a very exciting direction, but you're just not exemplifying it and giving the uh, just right level of intuition. Yeah, I, I should have added that. Uh, and Abhishek, one question. Uh, yes. Like uh, in your evaluation metric, yes. so like this diversification, the diversity metric is fine, but uh, what about like in the basic uh, NLG, natural language generation, people use like this uh, fluency for uh, like adequacy and all those things to measure the like how the generated text is on the basis of these evaluation metrics? 
So, is there any reason? Because you just mentioned the quality. So, quality is something like, uh, how do you judge the quality? Uh, by comparing again as with the trying data. No, that's but still, uh, like whether it is more informative, adequate, like whether it is more fluent. Okay. Uh, so, uh, it is because quality is like, otherwise it would be very, you know, like uh, judgmental kind of strategy. Uh, here, we, I mean, uh, so uh, so the so you need to do a, a manual evaluation for the what the current <coughs> state of the art works are relying on are the automatic evaluation technique to evaluate their approaches just because manual evaluations are not scalable for obvious reasons. So you basically use uh, a perplexity to yeah, yeah the exactly. quality. Yes. Right? How close to no. to the that, human generator? Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. So, so that's that's what I'm coming at. So, so that's why the blue measure and the perplexity measures. Uh, if you look these measures in the detail, in, in into the details, you'll identify how they connect with the quality or the kind of quality that we want this text generator to have, uh, and how that relates to the diversity. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's a, uh, there are a lot, probably five to six papers before that they have adopted uh, these measures. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, we have added, uh, as Dr. Chen suggested, a uh, perplexity measure. Um, so, it's just, the reason is just that uh, these measures, if you look into detail, they, they verify the kind of things that you are saying uh, without involving the human. So here, did you try the other generation method okay. to enhance your... You don't have the right baseline here. You don't. Uh, so, so your baseline is just a result of augmentation and waste. Yes. <laughs> no, I give you a very simple baseline which you can try. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in future work, uh, uh, we are planning to search for a better knowledge embeddings, I mean better knowledge draw if possible in harassment domain uh, if, if there is any availability of harassment domain so uh, in, uh, using that knowledge graph to generate uh, embeddings instead of uh, this data and also style based generation uh, this is something like uh, okay if uh, like given if i want body shame type of harassment tweets it will generate that kind of tweets or uh, uh, racial uh, type of harassment tweets uh, it will generate that kind of tweets this kind of work is already explored uh, uh, so one of the articles shared by dr seth uh, they have uh, they try to create the news but uh, if we give i want uh, uh, this uh, New York Times style of uh, news or uh, I want particular other style of news it tries to create that style of news so in future work we want to explore that direction so uh, this is uh, so these are the references and uh, uh, acknowledgement uh, uh, first of all uh, I want to uh, thank Dr. Sheth uh, for uh, providing such a great environment and also I'm really excited for being part of NOASIS because uh, uh, the learning I, I had is really great here and also uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. K.K. Chan, Dr. Valri and Dr. Prasad uh, 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 in particularly uh, for research, I'm, I'm really a beginner uh, in research. Uh, Dr. Chen uh, suggested uh, so many, I mean, I learned so many things from the sessions made by Dr. Chen. Uh, he, uh, for, particularly for research, uh, he told me uh, the place where I'm lagging in conducting right type of experiment. So that's... Uh, uh, that's really great and also uh, 
uh, mentor, uh, Dr. Shreyans. He he is like uh, I, I considered myself is lucky in that aspect. After coming to Noyasis, I I I mean I met him and uh, I connected with him. So I'm being lucky. He is not only uh, taught me about uh, this research. Uh, I he explicit he explicitly suggested me few things and uh, implicitly uh, without his session by looking at him I learned few things uh, even the way I have to talk I I'm not good at it but uh, I know now okay here I am and uh, I need to go in this direction and also Dr. Seth he always suggested uh, regarding my communication I know now I'm not good at it but I know this is the points that I'm lack and uh, I know these are the places I improve uh, and uh, thank you for Dr. Valerie for uh, uh, giving suggestions while conducting experiments regarding this uh, uh, harassment and also I want thanks Swati and uh, uh, for uh, being there at few times I was like really tensed whether I'm gonna uh, complete it by the time uh, or not so she is really uh, being there and uh, uh, supported me and also I want to thank uh, Thilini. Somebody needs to do that for her now. <laughs> Excuse uh, me for others. What about you? <laughs> so I want to thank Thilini. She is also helped me in, uh, because she is working on harassment uh, topics. She helped me uh, for... Uh, so Thilini, you need to give a talk uh, on this, uh, with the, all the things that is missing. Mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So that is all. Uh, so the biggest achievement is like uh, joined and uh, no, I mean uh, being part of noises. That's what I considered. Even uh, you don't build. Uh, so this is not a public uh, thing that I want to discuss. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, so I mean, I mean during uh, this is the this is the place. Uh, that helped me to come to USA. So, uh, so that. I don't. So yeah. Uh, good. Now you have a job also, right? So that's yeah. Really good. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to my decision. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. similarities to <clears throat> inquire about the diversity like how do you exactly because your training data itself might be so diverse and then you have this generated set are you doing like a pairwise comparison or how exactly so it is uh, I'm taking one generated sentence and I'm comparing with uh, comparing it with the whole uh, trying data and I'm uh, trying to uh, 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 so the objective is it tries to maximize to the one which it is closely related. So you get you get the max. Yes. Similarity. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, guys. The intern should be more engaged and get you know, get people to ask questions. You shouldn't be that passive. All right, guys. See you.